Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week we are celebrating Mardi Gras. I'm going to make three sequin covered, luster dusted mini cakes. I'll walk you through step by step. These are actually super simple and fun to make at home. Don't forget, I have new videos every single Tuesday, so please ring that notification bell so you'll know when there's a freshly baked treat for you. Let's get started. Wow. Yay! <laughs> For these three Mardi Gras cakes, I have baked my favorite velvet recipe, and I dyed it yellow, green, and purple. It's time to level them and cut them each into two layers. When I slice into these cakes at the end, I just want to see gorgeous, vivid color. So let's remove the caramelization from the sides. I like to do this by placing a cake pan that is one size smaller than the cake I baked right on top and then using a small sharp serrated knife to cut away all of the caramelization. Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> Why are you filming the sink, Jeremy? We would never show them the sink. Show them Jocelyn. Here you go, Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's next. I need to simple syrup these puppies. They're not puppies. <laughs> They're cake layers. Uh, Sir Squeeze, is this your Mardi Gras outfit? You know, Jocelyn, I'm noticing we have a lot of unicorn products. I was just wondering if you had anything to do with the selection. You want to let your simple syrup completely soak into your cake layers before filling. So in the meantime, it's time for Fan Love Feb. This week, I'm giving love to Nick from the Scran Line, Tegan from A Cake on Top, and Nina K from Bake My Day. You guys continue to inspire me with your creations and you always make sure to tag us, which I love. So I'm sending love back to you. I also want to shout out Isla Dre, Jordan Jimenez, Casey Grimshaw, Sarah Price, and Claudia Diaz. I just need something from my drawer. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Don't forget, if you would like a shout out in next week's video, subscribe to this channel, head over to your favorite How to Cake It video, and leave a comment letting me know why you love it. Make sure you play along with Fan Love Feb this week because next week I'll be doing a big giveaway to one lucky winner. No, Jocelyn, I don't need help. Thank you. <laughs> To fill these cakes, I have one recipe of my cream cheese frosting. I use this filling in my cake and cheese video where I make mini cakes that look like tiny pots of mac and cheese. So make sure to check out that video to get this recipe. And now I'm going to fill these cakes. This is perfect because velvet cakes go best with cream cheese frosting. I'm going to fill the two small layers and the two larger layers of each color of cake. In the end, I'll be left with six cakes, two that are yellow, two that are green, and two that are purple. I'm going to crumb coat these cakes in my Italian meringue buttercream. I have a video tutorial in which I show you how to make this buttercream. It's part of a playlist where I show you how to make all of my favorite recipes. The link is right up there. A little more angled. Like more. Here, Jocelyn. No. <laughs> there you go. Here. Okay. Okay, so instead of the crumb coat and chill dance, now that you're done, I think instead you should try and carry all six cakes to the fridge at once. I'm not dignifying that with an answer. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna carry them one at a time. <laughs> Now that my cakes are nice and chilled, I'm gonna ice them one more time with my Italian meringue buttercream. This is where I like to use my bench scraper to help smooth out the sides. Just line up your bench scraper parallel to the side of your cake and hold it at an angle. Then rotate your Lazy Susan and smooth out the sides. At this point, I like to label my cake board so that I remember what color cake is underneath my beautiful icing job. Dance. I like it. 
My cakes are iced and chilled. I'm going to begin by covering my two yellow cakes with yellow fondant. I have my green fondant and purple fondant here. Make sure to keep the fondant you're not using at the moment covered in plastic and airtight. We don't want it to dry out and develop a skin. Before rolling out fondant, you always want to knead it well to knock out any air bubbles. You can always just rub a little bit of vegetable shortening right onto the palms of your hands just to keep it from sticking. See this big seam? You want to tuck all your seams underneath the fondant. We're going to roll it with this side down with all the seams and the smooth side up. Use your thumbs and your fingertips to press it out into a circle. And this will just help you roll your fondant more evenly. The first thing I'm going to do is sprinkle some icing sugar. And then I rest my yellow fondant on top and begin to roll. When rolling a circle, I find it helpful to roll in all directions. If a nasty air bubble remains in your fondant, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to use this. I bet you can't see this. <laughs> it's a pin. Here. I always like to use a pin that has like a big head. This way, if I drop it or I lose it, I can always find it. Very important to be safe. You wanna insert your pin on an angle into the air bubble slowly and then use your fingertip to push the air out of the hole you created with the pin. I've rolled this circle of fondant large enough to drape over my smallest yellow cake. I've rolled the fondant about an eighth of an inch thick. It's nice and thin to drape over a cake. It's not too thin that it will be see-through and break, but it's not too thick that it will be unpalatable. I like to pick up my rolled out fondant with a French rolling pin. I find it helpful because I don't have to touch the fondant too much. I don't get fingerprints in it, and it's really nice for draping. So I drape it on. I like to use my fondant smoother to just smooth the top just for a moment. The first thing I like to do is use this part of my hand, I don't know what it's called, along my pinky, I call them the side, the side pinky palm, to first smooth sort of the top corner. And then I slowly use both hands to move down the sides of the cake, pressing the fondant in all along the sides. What you really are trying to do is push all of the air down and out underneath the fondant. Don't get that pom-pom in the view of the camera, okay? <laughs> Jocelyn is wearing an obnoxiously big pom-pom. Just get it for a minute. Just get it for a minute. <laughs> Can you see it? Now I'm gonna cut away some of the excess fondant, not right at the crease, we're not ready for that yet. Just some of the outer fondant so that we have more room to use our fondant smoother. I'm using this fondant smoother to properly finish smoothing the fondant to the cake. Keep the smoother in one place and turn your cake around using your Lazy Susan. And you really just wanna press the fondant onto the cake while pressing the base of the fondant down to the cake board. Before I cut away the excess fondant from the bottom, I like to use my fingertips and press that excess fondant right up to the cake because fondant has elasticity. So sometimes you think it's right to the bottom and then when you cut, it sort of bounces back. You don't want that. This time, hold your knife right against the cake and use the tip of the knife to cut away the excess fondant. A sharp knife is very important here. If your edges are really jagged, again, use the tip and just cut away any little straggly pieces of fondant. Okay, yay! I just inserted a yay. <laughs> I'm yeah. not gonna say it, I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> you look so good, yellow number one. Come over here. <laughs> I'm gonna tear these six cakes to create three tiered cakes. One that is green and purple, one that's yellow and green, and the last one, purple and yellow. We do not need boards or dowels to support these tiered cakes because the tiers are so small. But we do need a little bit of royal icing just to glue them together. Now to remove the smaller cake from the cake board, I like to run a sharp knife. You could also use a straight spatula right down between the board and the bottom of the cake. And pop it on top. Now for each one of my cakes, I'm going to brush the entire surface with clear piping gel. Then I'm going to press on a healthy layer of confetti. These ones are stars, and these ones are traditional round confetti. 
Whenever I press something onto a cake, I like to do it over a big cake pan, just because a lot of this stuff is gonna fall. Save your floors. The piping gel on these cakes needs to set until all of the confetti is secure. I'm gonna pop my cakes in the fridge for about an hour. Then we're gonna paint. I'm painting these cakes with luster paint, which is just a mixture of luster dust and clear food grade alcohol. And I like to brush it on with a soft bristled brush. To mix my luster paint, I'm going to add my alcohol little by little to the luster dust. I'm gonna use a dropper, you can use the cap of your bottle. In this case, I wanna make quite a thick paint so it will coat all of my confetti. I wanna paint each cake with the remaining color that's missing from the cake. On this cake, the bottom tier is yellow, the top tier is purple, so I'm going to paint it with a luster green. After painting my cakes, I placed them in the fridge to chill until the paint was dry and then I placed them all onto pretty cake stands. Now I'm just going to get creative, have some fun and see what I can do to decorate these cakes. I have some Mardi Gras themed masks and I have some fun feathers. The first thing I want to show you is how to use a straw to make using something like this feather on a cake food safe. You'll want to take your plastic drinking straw, hold it up against your cake, and you just want to trim it down so that it's the height of your cake. Then insert it anywhere in your cake where you want to place your decoration. There you go. What straw? <laughs> By doing this, I can insert my feather securely into my cake. I got all of these things at a local party store and now I'm just gonna have fun decorating these cakes. This is a really simple fun thing that you can do at home yourself. Mardi Gras. <laughs> Thanks for watching How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda. Please subscribe to this channel and take the time to hit the notification bell. It really means a lot. Don't forget, Fan Love Feb is still on, so remember to leave a comment on your favorite How to Cake It video using the hashtag Fan Love Feb and let us know why. Because one of you is gonna win an awesome giveaway next week.